Yeah, well, you know, it was typical. Um, what he did was, um, in the 1927 Mississippi flood, first of all, there was no role for the federal government in disaster relief. It didn't exist. Um, under the, uh, the only exception of that, when the Galveston hurricane took place, um, uh, some uh, the army had, had sent supplies, uh, but basically you relied on uh, private charity and above all the Red Cross. What happened in 1927 was that here's this disaster that is so much larger than anything else that had ever happened. And um, what Coolidge did was to send Herbert Hoover, uh, the master of emergencies, the man who had fed Belgium in World War I, who had organized the Food Administration uh, here at home, uh, and someone whose name was synonymous with relief. So that actually, believe it or not, I mean, that represented more than um, um, had been done in the past. Hoover went out, and of course what he did was he cemented his own reputation um, that led to his election as president one year later. Um, and he came back, Coolidge, Coolidge in the end acceded to flood relief, but he believed that it set a dangerous precedent. That if you once said government has a role, particularly in a mass disaster, you know, then before you knew it, that role would be institutionalized for lesser events. And again, it's a, it's not a modern way of looking at things, but it's um, it has a certain integrity. And you, sir. Harding died of a heart attack, a massive coronary. Um, although that's still being, you know, debated by by scholars, um, Mrs. Harding had nothing to do with his death. <laughs> um, contrary to what you know, some people, some sensationalists, we didn't invent, you know, sensationalism. Um, what happened was the news from the um, hotel in San Francisco was, of course, immediately uh, telephoned to Washington. And, um, and a call, the, the Coolidge household, the Coolidge farmhouse in Plymouth Notch, in addition to having no electricity and no indoor plumbing, did not have a telephone. So uh, the news was telephoned up to Rutland, Vermont, which is a few miles away, and, uh, and there was this kind of mad dash in the middle of the night to, to carry the news up to this isolated hamlet. Um, now across the street from the farmhouse was the little house where he was born, as a, which was uh, attached to the local uh, post office and um, general store, which had been run by his father. And uh, that's where Coolidge used to take journalists for one five cent moxie. Um, he would treat them to one uh, moxie. And uh, anyway, so what they did was they actually ran a phone from the um, general store across the one street in Plymouth Notch and into the window of the parlor of the, of the house. Uh, so anyway, the news, the, the news came and it was his father who was woken up uh, and told the news. Uh, the president and Grace were sleeping on the second floor um, in a bedroom that uh, actually you, you can't visit today but uh, because the stairway is so narrow but uh, Coolidge wrote in his autobiography that he knew when he heard his father's voice coming up the stairs that something was wrong. And I suspect he may very well have. And then um, his father told him that uh, the president had died. And Calvin and Grace, they got out of bed, they, they dressed, and they knelt in prayer. And uh, then came down the stairs. And at 2.47 in the morning, in the front parlor, the room where his mother had died, the room where his sister Abby had died, a room rich in emotion and memories uh, by the light of a kerosene lamp with, I believe, eight onlookers. 
um, he was sworn into office by his father. Extraordinary scene. Of course, the sequel is uh, he had been told by the Attorney General, the aforementioned Harry Dougherty, that this was perfectly legal because his father was a notary public. Just to be on the safe side, when they got back to Washington, they repeated the ceremony, uh, this time with uh, someone who was not a notary public. And, but, you could, but that was done secretly. What, what, what the public seized upon, the defining moment of the Coolidge presidency, was this extraordinarily primitive yet appealing scene in a Vermont farmhouse in the middle of the night. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Thanks very much. Just a reminder, the talk tomorrow morning at 11 is at Eberhard, and we'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Thank you very much.